Hey, I want to welcome everybody to uh, today's uh, webinar. It's uh, 5 o'clock in Europe and 11 o'clock on the East Coast in the U.S. We get uh, started on time. So today uh, our webinar is entitled Human Immune System Mice Oncology Applications, which is being presented by uh, Dr. Jean-Francois Mirjolet from uh, Taconic's oncology partner company, OncoDesign. Um, before we start, I want to introduce myself. My name is um, Holger Kissel. I work at Taconic in the uh, Global Business Development Group. And within our company, I am responsible for um, managing our oncology portfolio and uh, leading our oncology strategy. Um, part of this strategy and part of this portfolio is uh, one of the key components is the alliance with OncoDesign, of which uh, or in which uh, both companies have invested uh, a uh, great bit of time and uh, yeah, also resources to develop uh, human immune system mice specifically, and some of these aspects will be presented to you today in the webinar by uh, Jean-Francois. Before we get started, I'd like to address a few practical matters and housekeeping items. First, I want to let you know that this webinar will be made available to all attendees. We will email a link to the uh, presentation to you by the end of this week. Um, second, um, directly after the presentation, Dr. Mijolet will answer your questions as they appear in the control panel. So if you have any questions, please type it in the control panel that you see on your screen. The other attendees will not be able to see your questions as it is sent directly to Dr. Mijolet and myself. If you cannot see the control panel, just single click on the single arrow on the top of your screen. In case your question is not answered today at the end of the session, Dr. Mijolet will respond to you within the next 24 hours via email. If you are experiencing technical difficulties, please send the host a chat message and our staff will be able to assist you. So with these housekeeping matters taken care of, I. Uh, We'll get started um, with, the, with the webinar today. I mean, I hope that you enjoy today's presentation on the human immune system mice and their applications in oncology. I first want to introduce um, Jean-Francois Mejolet, uh, who is the technology director at OncoDesign, and in his role and with his expertise that he has in this field, is uh, directly supporting OncoDesign's business development activities and is working closely um, with scientists to consult the best uh, choice of the model for their um, therapeutic uh, testing applications, uh, including the human immune system mice. Jean-Francois has been working for OncoDesign for the past eight years, eight years as a study director and is the head of uh, cellular pharmacology and has played a central role in the development of reconstituted human immune system mouse models which are um, brand-labeled chi-mice uh, within the T-Onco and the OncoDesign portfolios. Jean-Francois obtained his PhD from the University of Nancy in France in cellular pharmacology, testing anti-cancer drugs, followed by a postdoctoral position at the Faculty of Medicine at the University of Brussels in Belgium. So with this introduction, I want to uh, get started now with the presentation and hand over to Jean-Francois who will guide you through the slides that we are showing today. Jean-Francois, can you please take over? Okay. Um, then I, I will talk today about humanized in, uh, mouse model and their uh, application in oncology. Um, first, uh, the, the this presentation will be first with some introduction words and various types of models, including uh, PBMC-based, uh, stem cell-based, and BLC uh, mouse model, and at the end some conclusion and perspective for uh, the evolu evolution of uh, this model. And for a uh, few words of introduction. This type of models need for sure a human uh, derived samples. Uh, as I said, peripheral blood derived, uh, umbilical cord blood or bone marrow derived cells and uh, various types of um, fetal derived uh, samples. And for being able to um, manipulate this type of sample, 
some agreements are needed and for sure the biological research center status is needed. Um, and there is some uh, legal requirement before uh, being able to manipulate this uh, human derived samples. Uh, besides the, the, the choice of the sample to be used to reconstitute the animals, the host strain is a very important uh, um, uh, parameter uh, to decide what kind of model you are able to, to do. Um, after having the mouse trained, there is some preconditioning regimen to be uh, applied to the mouse uh, in order to um, improve the engraftment and the development of uh, humanized immune system. Um, Fuels regarding biological research center. Um, in France and in uh, Europe, at least, there is various agreement to obtain before being able to import and manipulate uh, human-derived samples and other authorization for export of uh, derivative mouse or derivative model from this human um, uh, samples. Um, and for sure, there is also some uh, ethical application to, to obtain an uh, agreement from ethics committee for all uh, protocol design using this um, human derived samples. Regarding the mouse strain, um, in the past, the, there is mainly evolution regarding um, this mouse strain in order to help the engraftment of human immune cells. News mice that are uh, the first immunodeprimed animals available for engraftment of human tissues is not a good uh, candidate to uh, uh, um, accept engraftment of human immune cells. Um, the first model, uh, the first strain of mice that very uh, uh, gave advantage to the engraftment of cells is the uh, regular kid animals uh, being defective for T and B cells from the mouse side and having some remaining activities from NKs and functional MLT complements. After that, there is not kid animals that gave uh, again an improvement for engraftment of uh, the human stems and and for sure, there is a, the nut kid mouse is the first strain um, that uh, permits the engraftment of human stem cells. And more recently, starting from 2008-2009, nut or NHT animals being uh, deficient for IL-2 receptor uh, gamma expression uh, uh, are available and then uh, a huge um, improvement was made uh, using these two mouse strains. Uh, I will show you example using uh, all these strain of mice and uh, we start uh, our uh, evaluation of NHT animals is in 2008 through a uh, huge collaboration with uh, Stan of and uh, now we have uh, moved forward with no animals through uh, our recent alliances with uh, Kaplan. Um, the application of this uh, humanized mouse model is very, very large, starting with uh, um, simple model for compound efficacy, and I will show you example in that field. Um, some model in uh, cancer biology, like ADCC evaluation of um, antibody mediated effect, and some uh, pathology, pathologies related to um, immune-based disease, like autoimmune disease, inflammation, 
or uh, development of therapies in the field of infection vaccine development or TLR modulation. Um, in the uh, Oncodesign Technique portfolio, there is models based in PVMCs in various uh, mouse strains. I will show, show you in that example in, in that field. I, I will also um, show you example how to um, humanize mice with uh, stem cells coming from umbilical cord blood samples in both uh, non MHG animals, either adults or newborn animals, and at the end, I will um, show an example of uh, humanization using purified uh, human NK uh, cells. Then we will first start with the PBMC based uh, model. Um, the PBMCs are coming from either LC donor or um, a patient having um, various pathologies like hematological um, uh, malignancies. Uh, in some cases, and based on the mouse strain, um, you use preconditioning regimens uh, in order to help the engraftment of immune cells uh, could be needed, like uh, whole body irradiation of the mice or depletion of mouse and case through um, uh, targeted <coughs> antibody therapies. <coughs> Using PBMCs, uh, you, you, you have um, in the PBMCs content human T cells, and these T cells um, is mature and then functional. And uh, for sure, adding these T cells uh, within the mouse, these T cells will mount a graph of cell disease. Then this PBMC-based model is only dedicated to uh, rapid analysis of human immune function, and uh, it's only short-term study, uh, three to four weeks, depending on the number of uh, PBMCs and graphs due to the graph cell disease. Um, the graph cell disease is, in this model could be uh, a study by itself, um, this uh, graph cell disease model could be performed in various mouse strains, uh, from regular skid to NSG or NOG animals, and various readouts um, can be followed in this model, like the human CD4 CD8 ratio, some uh, cell surface activation markers in uh, T cells, and also production of human cytokines. This model is very well described in the literature, and all the um, human clinical feature of grasses of disease is recapitulated in uh, this mouse model. However, um, if you are not uh, working on graph cell disease, you have to take care of this graph cell disease uh, um, when using PBMCs and graft mice. An example of uh, what could be done with PBMCs in graftment is the evaluation of uh, B cell targeting therapies. Um, you, you have here the, the, the description of the protocol, starting with whole body radiation of the mice. It's based on um, skid or not skid animals, then, then mice having some uh, remaining mouse and case activities. Then we have uh, mouse and K depletion in place through antibody treatment every four days. Then IP injection of human PBMCs at D3. We have around 10 weeks for establishment of the engraftment of the human cells. In fact, we wait uh, this time in order to have um, 
and the stable investment of human cells, human uh, immune cells, and it's two weeks before uh, death of mice due to Graves-Stokes disease. Then it's a um, suitable window to evaluate an antibody-mediated uh, effect. Then we have a single antibody treatment at day 14. Then four days later, this treatment uh, still were collected for uh, fax characterization of uh, human B cell content. Various uh, therapies were tested. Um, we used the positive control rituximab, uh, which is a monoclonal. Um, uh, antibody against uh, CD20. We use as negative control uh, trastuzumab and new antibody was uh, evaluated in this model in a dose response manner. Uh, we, you have it, uh, in the graph here the result of individual animals for uh, the screen content of human B cells and in the negative treated group and negative control you have about 6 to 7 percent of human B cells. After a single treatment with uh, rituximab at 2 milligram per kilogram there is a significant uh, decrease of the B cell content down to uh, less than 2% and a dose re significant dose response effect was uh, observed uh, when treat, uh, the mice were treated with the new B cell targeting antibody. This model was uh, designed in skilled animals in order to have the ability to um, uh, to have in place all the antibody mediated effects. In fact, rituximab is known to uh, have the ability to induce apoptosis by um, direct binding to its target CD20, but it also has mediated effects through uh, the FSA uh, fragments, and then in case human case are present through the engraftment of PBMCs, but the CDC complement is also available from the mouse side as we are uh, uh, working in this model with uh, regular skilled animals. The next slide um, shows uh, the detailed analysis of the mouse spleen. Then we start first with a double detection of human leukocytes through the uh, human CD45 and mouse leukocytes through the mouse CD45 detection. Then after a second um, gated analysis uh, for the you know, characterization of CD19 and CD20 expression than the human B cells. You have here the um, analysis of the two examples from the negative control, which gave around 6 to 9 percent of B cells. And uh, after single treatment with rituximab, we clearly see a decrease of these B cells down to around 1 to 2. Uh, percent in both related donor uh, uh, in rituximab as compared to the trastuzumab treated uh, group. Another example of using uh, PBMCs uh, and graft uh, animals is uh, the um, evaluation of uh, ADCC mediated effect in tumor bearing animals. 
for this purpose, we uh, use NOG animals, and uh, we have uh, chosen a tumor model, uh, which is BT474 breast tumor model, known to be uh, sensitive to trastuzumab, uh, which is a humanized monoclonal uh, antibody against R2 uh, cell surface protein. Uh, the schedule of this model is first irradiation of the mice in order to uh, help for the engraftment of uh, BT474 um, tumor. Then three to four weeks for uh, tumor growth and uh, randomization process based on tumor volume. Then. Uh, humanization through IP injection of PBMCs and starting of treatment with um, IV injection of uh, ercetin on a weekly basis. Before moving with the uh, humanized condition, there is some uh, requirement and some um, uh, parameter to set up uh, before. The first parameter to set up is the perfect growth of the tumor uh, cells in the presence of human PBMCs. And the second parameter is the uh, knowledge of the dose response of uh, trastuzumab in order to be sure that we are in a window that gave us the ability to address the additive effect of the presence of human PBMCs. Then the ADCC mediated effect from these PBMCs. After having defined both these parameters, then you are able to perform the experiment in presence of human PBMCs. The result from uh, this study is um, present here through two different types of um, graphs. The first is the mean day-to-day -day variation of the tumor volume between controlled uh, uh, irrelevant IgG treated group, ercetin alone treated group, and ercetin in presence of human PBMCs. The randomization was done at uh, 29 days after tumor cells uh, subcutaneous administration, and um, then we follow the tumor volumes uh, every four days, three to four days. We observe a significant effect of ercetin in the first few days after start of treatment, and we also observe a slight improvement of the acetin activity in the presence of human PBMCs. The last day of evaluation was day 43 due to uh, onset of grass cell disease and uh, initiation of dates of some animals in various groups. Then we, uh, uh, the study was ended at day 43. When um, representing the results using the uh, treaty to control uh, persons' value, we also observe that the curve of the r in presence of the PBMCs is always below the curve of the r treated group. At the end, we can conclude that in this model, we have uh, a participation of the PBMCs in the anti-tumor uh, effect mediated by herceptin. However, the um, whole uh, results are uh, not statistically uh, um, uh, significant at the end. Then only a trend uh, of uh, improvement um, is evidence in the presence of human PBMCs. Um, 
in order to close the chapter uh, using uh, PVMCs, I will show you uh, whether it's coming from um, Shiokawa and colleagues who um, describe the model based on uh, only human and case and uh, using again no animals. Um, the technical details of this uh, study is um, engraftment of body lymphoma, human body lymphoma uh, through IV route, then few days after injection of lymphoma cells, single IV injection of rituximab uh, mixed with uh, purified human and K cells. The main finding from this study is first no significant modification of the tumor cell development in the presence of human NKs alone or in the presence of human NKs mixed with uh, irrelevant human IgG. When doing the uh, experiment with rituximab, again, no modification of the survival by the human NK itself and only uh, improvement of the survival, increase in survival uh, in the presence of human NK with uh, rituximab. Then the conclusion is that there is only few days survival of human end cases in the mouse host. However, this human end case retains the killing function of um, human target sense and then an increase in survival in the presence of human end case and rituximab uh, is evident in this uh, DODI lymphoma uh, engraft. Uh, um, another interesting model is the opportunity to engraft um, not only uh, human LC immune cells but patient derived um, tumor and immune cells. A nice uh, uh, publication was uh, released by uh, Dr. Banker and colleagues and they engraft uh, NHG mice with um, uh, suspension of cells coming from uh, acetic uh, ovarian tumor. And in this model, uh, interesting finding is that uh, the tumor model was fully recapitulated in the mouse host with development of human tumor acetes, the release of uh, some specific markers in the mouse serum and CA125 and some uh, metastatic uh, spreading on, of this uh, ovarian tumor um, into the pleural space. In addition to the tumor development, acetic free contain many, many human immune cells. And um, these human immune cells um, remain uh, viable after engraftment within um, the IP cavity of this mice. And uh, the functionality of these immune cells, mainly T cells and plasma cells, were confirmed through various assays. Then these uh, models were uh, immune cells and tumor cells are coming from the same patient, could be a very, very interesting model to test uh, specific and um, immune, uh, immunomodulator therapies uh, in 
this model knowing that you have the immune mediator and also the target tumor cells. We will now move to the uh, human stem cells uh, and graft model. This model um, is based then on hematopoietic stem cells coming from from our side from uh, umbilical cord blood samples, but uh, these stem cells could be um, originated from bone marrow or uh, mobilized blood samples. In this model, uh, the human immune system will be um, developed from uh, the stem cells, then uh, naive immune cells will be uh, differentiated in this model, then no graphic source disease um, uh, pathologies or we will develop in these stem cells and graft mice. However, uh, right now, the functionality of all human immune cell subtypes are not proved and uh, uh, there is some need to um, address uh, how to uh, improve the functionality of all human immune cell subtypes. And this model, based on the fact that there is no graphic disease, a uh, long-term experiment could be done as the model is stable for uh, many months. I will describe the engraftment process and some use on this model. Then first, from our side, we used um, stem cells from freshly collected umbilical cord blood samples. And the type of cells that were injected in mice is mononuclear cells depleted from mature T cell function in order to avoid, avoid uh, the graphic cell disease mediated by these T cells. Then you have here uh, the facts qualification of um, the uh, naive uh, samples then with the content of uh, human stem cells based on the CD34 um, surface marker and the qualification of the content of human T cells uh, using CD3 marker. Then after uh, magnetic depletion uh, on T cells, the samples is analyzed again in order to quantify the human stem cells and to be sure that there is no remaining T cells. After the samples then containing only mononuclear cells depleted on T cells and enriched in stem cells is injected in animals. Two different models uh, are of interest. The first use newborn animals with various types of administration routes. In our case, is, uh, it is IV uh, infracardiac injection um, in uh, newborn NUG or NHG animals. And in uh, young adults, uh, it's IV injection of the same um, cell preparation. In both cases, uh, either adult or newborn setting, uh, all animals were uh, whole body irradiated in order to improve the establishment of the uh, stem cells. After Eight to 12 weeks, the engraftment is um, roughly stable 
and then we perform some characterization of the engraftment in the sense file um, immune organs, then bone marrow, thymus, and spleen. And these organs were characterized for, for the content of human leukocytes as compared to the mouse leukocytes. And you can see that a large amount of um, uh, human leukocytes between 70 to uh, near 90 percent of the leukocytes found in these three organs are of human origin. In the mouse blood, um, the subtyping of the human immune cells was uh, also performed, and uh, B, T, and K, and um, also monocytes were uh, found. We also found a small number of human granulocytes. Some human platelets were, were also uh, evident in this model. However, uh, no uh, fully differentiated uh, erythrocytes were uh, quantified in this model and recent uh, available publication uh, described uh, the absence of human erythrocytes uh, by the uh, uh, phagocyting of this human uh, erythrocyte by mouse uh, microphages. Uh, you have in this slide um, description of the uh, percentage of this uh, human population with mainly at week 12 uh, mainly T cells, monocytes, small amounts of B and NK cells, and around 15% of granulocytes, which is very, very low as compared to the human blood. There is also a significant differences between uh, male and female animals, whatever you, do, you use, uh, young adults or uh, newborn animals, and female being more permissive to the uh, development uh, and uh, engraftment of the human stem cells coming from uh, umbilical cord blood samples in this example. You have here an example of using this um, uh, humanized model than using uh, stem cells in NSG or not backgrounds in order to evaluate um, TLR mediated uh, compound. Then mice were humanized and 12 weeks after engraftment of stem cells, a single administration of compound was made and a kinetic of uh, cytokine release was performed and cytokine from uh, human origin. And what we have found in this model is that we obtain a very specific response in the treated mouse as compared to the untreated animals through the release of interferon gamma uh, and TNF alpha uh, cytokine. Then uh, the conclusion regarding this experiment is that uh, the T cells uh, in this condition are um, uh, enough differentiated to mount and give a specific response after um, treatment with uh, TLR agonist. We also have performed some characterization of the basal levels 
of um, immunoglobulin content and also cytokine content in uh, nog mice and graft with stem cells. And this was done in a kinetic uh, manner. And you have here the results for the week 20 post engraftment. We have found some um, IgM with no IgG uh, secretion. And this is in, um, in, in good accordance with what is described in the literature, meaning that uh, the B cells are not fully mature and only IgM could be produced and very, very small, even sometimes no IgG could be released from uh, these B uh, cells. Regarding the cytokine, cytokine production uh, in the basal condition, we um, can detect uh, interferon gamma, IL-10, IL-6, TNF-alpha, EGF, and uh, GM-CSF um, growth factor, and no secretion of IL-2, IL-4, IL-17, or VEGF. Then, um, in this basal condition, uh, the T cells are uh, at some point functional with release of uh, cytokine uh, in the basal level. Um, I will describe here some interesting uh, results coming from a paper from uh, Dr. Becker and colleagues, and they use um, newborn irradiated uh, BRG mice, which is bad C RAC2 um, um, knockout IL2 uh, receptor gamma knockout mice. And uh, they use enteropathic injection of uh, human stem cells coming from fetal liver. And they set up this model in order to validate some vaccination process using either um, HBV or tetanus vaccine. And the protocol for vaccination is three intramuscular injection of vaccine at week 14, 16, and 18. The main uh, finding from this study is that uh, there is B cell function and uh, normal switch of B cells in the naive, naive mice. The whole repertoire from the IgM expressing cells are completely undistinguishable from the normal human uh, immune repertoire. And after uh, vaccination, um, around 40% uh, of the treated mice so the production of um, antigen uh, specific IgM. The, uh, sorry, <clears throat> you have here the example of the production of um, anti um, hepatic B antigen in these animals. And then in the PBS 3D control, uh, there is no production of uh, anti HB antigen uh, IgM. And half of the treated animals, uh, there is secretion of uh, IgM and small amount of IgG. From the whole treated animals, they separate the response from the non-responder and good responder, 
and they um, uh, qualify the answer through the specific IgM and uh, specific IgG uh, produce, uh, secretion in the plasma samples and for sure the uh, good responder show both types of immunoglobulin in the mouse serum. After having uh, characterized this uh, uh, answer to uh, the vaccine, they collect the human B cells from the spleen and they try to establish stable B cell clones and they are able to establish this B clone producing um, uh, the specific IgM towards tetanus toxin and hepatic B virus antigen. Then uh, the we will switch now to the last model uh, that is of interest, uh, the BLT model. And this model is based mainly on um, NHT animals and the uh, human material is human fetal sinus and liver uh, surg um, that is uh, surgically implanted under the kidney capsule and also IV injection of uh, stem cells isolated from this fetal liver. This model was mainly uh, used as it gave rise to very uh, stable and long-term T-cell reconstitution and uh, fully differentiation and functional T-cells. However, there is mainly uh, uh, some um, issues uh, uh, to establish this model. The first is the uh, tissue availability and mainly for uh, ethical uh, reason. And uh, in, um, in a, there is also um, a huge heterogeneity uh, in the uh, engraftment and surgical implantation of these um, tissue samples as it's very difficult to uh, calibrate the size of the surgical implants. And at the end, despite the fact of there is a nice T cell function and reconstitution, the T cells are able to be mature in two separated organs. The one the first is the human thymus, fetal thymus organ, but also the second could be the mouse thymus host. Then the T cell response is of mixed origins coming from then T cell differentiated in the human environment and from the T human T cells uh, differentiated in the mouse thymus. Then, after having described the three main uh, human health models, I will give you some perspective. Um, as I said before, um, the stem cell based model is, uh, uh, for some point, uh, defective, and for sure, the myelin compartment is very, very low represent as compared to the human situation. And the lymphoid uh, compartment, despite the presence of holes in lymphoid cells, uh, there is some defect in the lymphoid differentiation. Then there is some need in the mouse uh, strain in order to support the uh, recovery of the myelin compartment, and this could be obtained by using uh, transgenic animals in the non or NEG background, but expressing uh, human uh, GNCSF, and to help to the full differentiation of the human lymphoid cells, uh, IL-15 transgenic expressing mice could be of interest, and there is some nice uh, publication available for uh, describing this uh, possibility. 
Uh, there is also uh, the possibility to uh, think about new humanization process. Uh, uh, and I uh, show you what is available by using the PLT and then bone marrow uh, sinus liver derived uh, model. However, we have to think about a simple way to uh, humanize the animals in order to be able to um, uh, ca uh, have a nice calibration of the batch of animal produce. And just to conclude, um, we can also think to humanize other compartments of uh, the animals by uh, uh, humanization of the liver through reconstitution of mouse liver by uh, human um, uh, hepatic cells and then having the ability to use uh, this model for uh, hepatitis uh, development through HPV and HCV and then testing uh, targeted therapies for uh, these pathologies. I will thank you all for your attention and I'm ready to answer your questions. <coughs> Okay, Jean-François, thank you very much for this uh, summary and overview of the, the status of the technology in terms of uh, providing or reconstituting mice with a human immune system. I hope that uh, the audience that we had today uh, appreciated uh, this overview and also um, was able to recognize the expertise that is available at OncoDesign in, uh, in generating these, mice uh, these mouse models. Um, and this expertise, I just want to highlight again, has been also a very strong driver for Taconic um, to form this alliance uh, with OncoDesign. I just want to put also the timing of this webinar uh, a bit in context, why we have this now. Um, both companies, as I mentioned in the introduction, have invested into um, um, modifying these animals and providing human immune system mice. We have now uh, within this alliance completed uh, the first block of the R&D um, to develop the knock mouse as a suitable model for uh, to be reconstituted with, uh, with the human immune system and many of the studies that were just shown with the PBMC reconstitution or hematopathic stem cell reconstitution as well as assays in the area of craft versus host disease as well as ADCC have been part of these developments um, and we are now um, starting to interact with, uh, with customers to offer these as a service and these human immune system mice also as a product from both OncoDesign and uh, Taconic. So, Jean-François, there were a couple of questions that uh, came up um, throughout your, your presentation, and um, I just want to use the next five minutes then to address some of these. Um, the first question is, um, what is the most suited model for ADCC studies? And I guess this refers to the beginning of your presentation, and maybe putting this in context, or putting the PBMC reconstituted models in context to the hematopoietic stem cell reconstituted models for studying ADCC? Um, in, in fact, PBMC-based model and stem cell-based stem cell model could be used to address these questions. However, in the PBMC-based uh, model, we have functionality of NK cells, it's sure. We have a large engraftment of survival of this NK. However, due to the graft-exposed disease, uh, the um, experimental condition is very, very um, difficult to find in order to have a, a suitable window to address the antibody-mediated antibody function through AGCC. For the stem cell model, uh, unfortunately, the NK uh, produced by the human stem cells are not fully mature uh, in uh, the normal environment of the NHG or NOG uh, strain. And um, uh, there is some external supplementation needed to um, uh, improve the functionality and the differentiation of the NK cells. Um, uh, and um, 
the stem cell based model is suitable for uh, the treatment period as we have a very large window to uh, establish the model then treat through um, uh, with an antibody. However, we have to think about um, uh, an external supplementation for the NK differentiation or to uh, uh, set up a new mouse strain uh, expressing uh, human IL-15 in order to uh, stabilize the NK production and to have a human NK functional uh, in this system. Okay. Um, thank you, Jean-François, for this um, answer. There is one other question that I'd just like to raise here, and that is, uh, did you try to use human mesenchymal stromal cells to facilitate or improve the humanization of the microenvironment? Um, it is a very, very good question, and uh, there is some uh, nice description in the literature uh, showing the importance of uh, these uh, mesenchymal stem cells to uh, improve the uh, engraftment and differentiation of uh, stem cells. Uh, from our side, we don't have test any uh, 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 supplementation uh, of human mesenchymal stromal cells, or we don't have uh, test the uh, implication of this uh, mesenchymal stromal cells in the engraftment procedure. However, we think that uh, these uh, mesenchymal stromal cells are included in the mononuclear cell population we use to um, humanize the animals. Uh, but we don't have any uh, uh, data showing the, uh, this uh, uh, improvement. Okay. okay. I'm sure, Francois, one, one, maybe two more questions and then we should close this. Um, one question was, have we tried serial transplants uh, to assess the long-term reconstitution of the mice? I would assume that serial transplants of, uh, with hematopoietic stem cells. Uh, no, we, we don't have tried uh, serial transplants. I, I think it's not really needed. Uh, in all uh, settings we've tested, whatever, in newborn animals or adult animals, a simple single administration uh, of uh, the mononuclear uh, cells uh, containing uh, the stem cells are enough to uh, um, humanize 100% of animals and to obtain stable engraftment of these stem cells. Okay. Um, one question I'd like to answer. There was a question if we supply the humanized mice as a product or only offer services. Um, we actually do both. We um, reconstitute mice with a human immune system, ship them to customers for their in-house studies, and of course we um, have the expertise at OncoDesign to handle any compound to study the impact of this compound on the immune system at OncoDesign's um, facilities. So the last question that I have, and I want to apologize to anybody whose question we could not answer. There were quite a few technical questions, for example, low-dose or high-dose ir irradiation, uh, what did we use here, how many cells did we inject, we will get back to you with these detailed answers. But as the last question, I just want to pick up um, this one here. Um, it's a broad question, actually. Maybe uh, in one minute, Trump was well, you can answer this. Could you discuss the incidence timing and implications of the xenograft versus host disease in CD34 transplanted and uh, BLT mice. Uh, re regarding the CD34 transplanted animal, I'm able to answer this question. Um, um, in fact, it's only related to the uh, uh, quality of the purification, purification of the stem cells. Uh, if you are able to completely remove uh, human mature T cells from 
the stem cells preparation, then uh, in our setting, there is no graphic first disease, as uh, there is no mature T cells coming from the original samples. The only T cells we have uh, are recovered from the stem cells and differentiated from the stem cells, and these T cells are able to tolerate uh, the mouse host. Mm -hmm. um, right. For the TLT uh, animals, we don't have perform any experiment in house. Um, I suppose that regarding the type of tissue and graft, uh, it should uh, be the case that there is no uh, graft disease also. However, I'm, I'm not uh, enough experience to, to answer that, uh, that part of the question. Right, we don't we don't know this with the BLT model, but I can also add to this that through the expertise that uh, within this alliance and within Taconic we have available from our Japanese partners, the CIA, who have also um, developed many of the protocols we are using with the humanizing the NOC mouse. They also have not observed the GVHD when reconstituting NOC with CD34 positive stem cells. Um, having said that, I want to thank everybody for, for staying uh, two minutes longer than, in, uh, than intended um, to, for this webinar here today. And I want to close now and uh, wish everybody uh, a good, uh, good day. And uh, thank you for your attendance. Bye-bye.